Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, the numbers are going good so far for this whole systems design series, which is great because it keeps my depression at bay. Uh, today I'm trying something a little bit new with the iPad where I kind of pre-draw most of the stuff as to save everybody time, not having to wait for me drawing. And also it means my drawings are gonna be a little bit better. I can put some more thought into them. So let's go ahead and talk about some LSM trees and SS tables and we can start learning. All right, let's get started. So today we're gonna to be talking about an LSM tree, which is another type of database index that was developed a little bit later in time relative to the B tree, which we talked about in our last video. So the kind of main component of this LSM tree index that we're going to start by looking at is a red, black, or perhaps a B tree or an ABL tree, basically any balanced binary search tree that is going to be put in memory. So I've drawn that out for us below. Let's imagine we have a bunch of students and their scores on the last math test or computer science test or whatever. So we've got you know a bunch of these guys. As you can see, because it's a binary balanced search tree, we know that for every single node, all of the nodes to the left of it are going to have a lower key and all of the nodes to the right of it are going to have a higher key. So we can see our invariant has been satisfied. So for now, let's imagine that all of the reads and writes to and from the database are going to this tree, right? So if I were to add this key Dan here in red, or maybe that's orange, I am colorblind, uh, we're going to go ahead and add it under Chuck and to the right of Chuck, which is good. It means it's in the right place. And what that means is that all of these reads and writes are going to be O of log N, really, really good goes to memory, which is very fast. Okay, but as we've discussed plenty of times already, just doing everything in memory is not so simple. So right now we've got a couple of issues. We have our in-memory balanced binary search tree, which like I said, red, black, AVL, B tree, any of those algorithms might work. I'm not gonna cover them because they're all pretty complicated and frankly, I don't even know them that well. You can do that on your own time. Okay, so a couple of things come up when we have a tree that is in memory, and we've spoken about this in the past, especially as it pertains to hash indexes. So there are two main issues. The first one is going to be that there is no durability, right? That means if the computer shuts down, your index is effectively lost, and that is not going to work for us. So what are we going to do? Well, similarly to the hash index, we are going to use a write-ahead log. Now that is a sequentially written log that we store on disk, meaning that writes are going to be relatively fast because we don't have to jump all over the place on disk. And basically, if it's going to be the case that, you know, something like, uh, you know, the machine were to crash or anything like that, all we would do is go ahead through the changes on the write ahead log and replay them, gradually reformulating our LSM tree, which is really good. So now we've covered durability, but it does come at the cost of slower writes because now we have to deal with disk IO. Okay, the other big issue is that we have less space. For hash indexes, I basically just told you to go fuck yourself. I said all the keys have to fit in memory, but for the LSM tree itself, there's actually a very clever solution to this, and this is where this video actually starts to get complicated. So we've got this big thing right here, less space, and the only way we're gonna get more space is by starting to incorporate all of that extra space that we have on disk. So let's go ahead and do something. Our LSM tree has gotten too big. Let's say it surpassed some threshold in bytes, right? We know that uh, that might be you know, some amount of kilobytes. Let's leave it at that. I'm not going to name an exact amount. That's for the researchers. So when that LSM tree gets too big, we're gonna do two things. First of all, we're going to reset it, right? We're gonna purge it of all the nodes in it. And then second of all, we're going to convert it to something called an SS table, and that is going to be on disk. So the SS table itself is basically the following. It is a conversion of our LSM tree over here to the left to be sorted in order with all of the scores kept the same. And that SS table is immutable. Once we've converted this to an SS table, we're not touching the results of that SS table, we're just keeping it in disk. And I'll explain to you kind of how that works in a second. You may also say to yourself, damn, isn't that a pretty expensive operation to convert this tree to a sorted list on disk? Sorting is obviously very expensive. If you have to sort an array, that is going to be O of n log n at best. Well, actually, Kind of the really great part about us using a binary search tree is the fact that we can do an in-order traversal on it. And that's an algorithm that happens in linear time. I've literally written out the pseudocode right here. And what that means is that by running our in-order traversal, we can get all of those nodes in order so that we get um, this sorted table relatively quickly. We can write it on disk and then we're done with it. Okay, so now we have our sorted table. So to just kind of give a bigger picture of what's really going on here, we have basically the following, right? We've got our LSM tree, 
which is in memory. And then once that becomes sufficiently big, it's gonna get converted to SS tables. So you see now that we have multiple SS table files because these are basically the conversions of past LSM trees once they've gotten too big. And these again are on disk. Okay, so what is the point of having all of these SS table files? Well, basically the main thing is that you know, we, all of our writes are going right here into the LSM tree, but when we're reading, we have to also incorporate those SS table files. So how are we incorporating the SS tables? Basically, when we read, the first thing that's gonna happen is we look for our key in the LSM tree. That's literally just a tree traversal. This is a binary search tree. We all know how to find a key in a binary search tree. So that's gonna be step one. If our key isn't in there, it was perhaps written in the past, right? Maybe it's on one of our SS tables. So then we have to actually check the most recent SS table and we have to check the second most recent SS table. If the key happens to be in both of these tables, well, it means that the one that was written most recently is the most up-to-date value of that key. Because like I said, SS tables are immutable. If we want to update a value, we basically just have to write it again. And the same thing actually goes for deleting a key. So what if we want to do a delete? Well, this is where we do something called a tombstone. So I have it written down on the bottom left of the screen right here. For this tombstone, let's imagine that I want to delete the key Jordan. So if you know the key Jordan is in SS table two over here with value 10, and then it's also in SS table one over here with the tombstone value, you can see that's just the red X with the circle. It means that because the tombstone value is in the more recent SS table, I know that comparing the two of them, I can be certain that basically the key Jordan has been deleted, assuming it's not in our LSM tree, of course. So the other big thing to note here is that every single one of these reads that we're gonna be performing for an individual key is O of log N, right? Because in an LSM tree, this is a balanced binary search tree, so we know that we're reaching logarithmic time complexity when finding a key. Additionally, for all of these SS tables on disk, the really nice thing is that they're already sorted. And so because of the fact that they're sorted, it means that you can go ahead and binary search them for the proper value of your key. So binary search, of course, means that you know we're starting here. Let's say uh, we have an A and a Z over here, and we're looking for key E, right? So the letter in the middle of the alphabet is going to be K or something like that. And then we say, oh shoot, you know we're looking for K, so now we're going between A and K. Uh, oh wait, uh, you know now we've got uh, D. Oh wait, we want E, which is between D and K. So now let's look over here, and eventually we find our row, right? So that's binary search. That's logarithmic complexity. Okay. So I've basically said to you now, recall that every single time we do a read, we first check the LSM tree, then we check all of our SS tables on disk in the order that they were submitted, or basically rather reverse chronological order. So what we're gonna actually go ahead and get into now are some LSM tree optimizations, right? Because that read process that I've described alone can actually take a pretty long time. And so there are a few things that we can do to speed this up, especially as it pertains to the tables on disk. So the first thing that we can do is actually add something called a sparse index. So let's imagine I have an SS table here and basically all it has is all names, right? Let's imagine every single person that has ever been received a name from A to Z is in this SS table. Well, what we can do is actually create something known as a sparse index, where we take certain keys out of that SS table and write their, uh, basically their location on disk. So by putting all of these right here, see we have Adam, Jordan, Sam, and Quincy, we can actually get started on our binary search a little bit faster. So if I know that um, you know the name that I want is between A and J, right? I'm looking for Dan. I know that I only have to binary search between the locations for Adam and Jordan. And that is going to speed up our query because it skips out on a couple iterations of binary search, which is really great. So that's going to help us a lot for reads. And again, it doesn't take up a lot of space on disk because this index is sparse. It's not containing all of the keys, just some of them. So we actually have an index for our SS table. In addition to that, we can do something else called a bloom filter. Now the bloom filter itself is something that I'm gonna cover in a separate video because it kind of deserves its own video. It's a really cool kind of probabilistic data structure. But basically the gist of it here is the bloom filter allows us to say whether a key is not in a table, right? So basically, you know, if I'm looking for the name tech lead, in this SS table. I can't imagine anyone has actually been legally named tech lead, unless he is, that would be wild. And so of course our bloom filter would just go ahead and say no, it's not in there. 
Now, this isn't going to be 100% accurate, right? It's, if it happens to say that the key may be in there, it could be wrong. But all of these no's basically means that we can skip out on searching this particular SS table, and that, again, is going to speed up our query. Okay, so finally, we've gotten through all of our LSM table specific details, but there's just one last issue. I've mentioned so far that there's no explicit deletions of keys, right? We just have this concept of a tombstone. And whenever we update a key, we're effectively just adding another copy of it right into our index. So we're going to potentially be wasting tons of storage. So the last thing to think about that uh, kind of some of these indexes will do is perform a step known as compaction. So you can see that I've drawn up on the iPad screen right here, uh, these two SS tables, SS table one, which I'm going to assume is the more recently written one, and SS table two. And you can see that they each have three students in their respective scores. And the issue is that the key Alex is duplicated in both. Let's imagine the teacher made an error and then she went ahead and corrected Alex's score. And so now Alex has an updated score of 93 instead of 91. In reality, there would probably be even more wasted space in this as opposed to just one example. So let's go ahead and perform compaction. What we're going to first do is start with basically two pointers, right? And they're going to start at the zeroth index of both of these SS table arrays. I'm now going to compare the two of them. I see Alex from SS table one and SS table two. As you can see, Alex from SS table one is the same as Alex from SS table two because they have the same key. But since SS table one is more recent, the value Alex with 93 is going to win. And that is why we have 93 in our new combined SS table. Next, we're going to move the pointer ahead on SS table one since we selected that value. And we're going to actually do the same on SS table two since it was actually a duplicate. So now we have Bob compared to Dan. Bob is going to be the lower key, hence we have Bob here. We're going to do the same thing now with Dan not moving forward. And we're going to compare Charlie to Dan. As you can see, Charlie again is lower. So that's why Charlie comes in. And then finally, we'll add Dan and Edward from the other table. That is how we can go ahead and actually keep the resulting list from our two SS tables sorted. And of course, that is going to be in O of N complexity. You can go ahead and check this problem out on Leet code. You're literally just merging two sorted lists. Okay, so let's go into some conclusions to talk about because we've gone over three types of indexes now, which are the main ones that I wanted to address for this series. And I want to kind of make an overarching statement about what's good for which use case. So let's start out with the hash index since that's what we did first. And hopefully you guys have a good sense of that now. So the great thing about the hash index is that because it's in memory and because it's a hash map, it is super, super fast. We have O of one reads and writes in memory. Now the writes are obviously gonna get a little bit slower due to that write ahead log. But at the end of the day, this is going to be the fastest in terms of performance for just individual key reads and writes. That being said, there are two main downsides. The keys need to fit in memory because our index is just in memory. And also, there are no range queries allowed. We've said that hash maps are really, really not good for dealing with range queries. And if you want to deal with range queries, you probably have to figure out a way to sort your data. So that is kind of where our B tree comes in. Now, this is kind of the standard index in a lot of relational databases. We'll cover what a relational database is in a future video. But basically, the advantages of a B tree is that you can get really fast range queries, right? Everything is co-located to the basically similar keys on disk. If I have a key uh, Adam and I have a key Alex, they're going to be very close together on disk and they're going to be far from the key Zachary. At the same time, uh, the writes are actually going to be pretty slow because they're going straight to disk. Unlike the hash index where writes are in memory, having to go through a few iterations of a tree on disk and ultimately make your write is probably pretty slow. So the B tree definitely really sacrifices on writes there. But again, the main advantage is this is actually feasible for big data sets. You can actually keep all of your keys on disk as opposed to having to keep them all in memory. And then kind of the last big thing here is of course the LSM tree, which we've just spoken about. So you can see I actually have a couple of white points here. The reason for that being that they're kind of the middle ground between the B tree and the hash index. So basically the main kind of pro point for the LSM tree is of course that you're not limited by the size of RAM in your computer in terms of how many keys you can store. At the same time, we have a couple of kind of mediocre points. On one hand, compared to B trees, the writes are going to be fast. That's because they're going to memory. Of course, there is a write ahead log involved, which is going to make writes a little bit slower. But at the end of the day, just know that writes to LSM tree indexes are faster than B trees. Of course, though, they are going to be slower than the hash index. That's because even though you're writing to memory for both, uh, writing to a hash map is going to be faster than writing to a binary search tree. 
just based on time complexity alone. Additionally, another great thing about the LSM tree that we didn't cover in too much depth is that it supports range queries. This is because all of our SS tables have sorted keys, right? So it means that all of the keys that are similar to one another are going to be close to one another in our SS tables. However, of course, as with just a normal read query, for range queries, we're going to also have to read all of those SS table files. And by doing so, it means that those range queries are going to be slower than just a simple B tree range query where we only have to do one read. And of course, kind of the last big deal in all of this is compaction. We've mentioned compaction so far as a way to kind of reduce the amount of disk space that we've used. And effectively, because of compaction, we are going to be doing some background CPU usage in order to merge those SS table files together. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm doing my best to kind of make these as comprehensive as possible. And as always, I hope you have a great day.